Usually, Huntington's disease appears during adulthood. When the affected person is under 20 years old, it is the juvenile form of the disease. This form is rare and touches less than 10% of all affected individuals. Almost all affected children have an initial normal development, but they eventually lose skills they already acquired, such as speaking, reading, and playing sports. The symptoms of the juvenile form are different from those of the adult form. The earlier the disease begins, the higher the child's risk of developing rigidity rather than chorea and involuntary movements. Chorea may be present when the disease begins slightly later on, between 15 and 18 years of age. 25 to 30 percent of children affected with the juvenile form suffer from seizures. Physically, we notice slowness and stiffness, especially in the legs, problems with walking and frequent falling, clumsiness, and difficulty speaking. Behavior and personality changes are also seen, including anger, screaming, and impulsivity. The child may be disorganized, distracted, or may develop depression, anxiety, or irritability. Intellectual capacity is affected, and we notice a slowness to respond and react, difficulties learning new information, and a decrease in attention and concentration. It can be very difficult to diagnose juvenile Huntington's disease. The disease is very rare and few doctors know about it. Several symptoms are similar to other diseases and these possibilities must first be eliminated before considering a diagnosis of Huntington's disease. A neurologist specialized in movement disorders will be more familiar with the disease. It is suggested that the neurologist assess the child twice with an interval of 6 to 12 months between each assessment. This will allow the doctor to confirm that the symptoms are progressive. The disease can then be confirmed with a genetic test. A multidisciplinary approach is suggested and may include a neurologist, a psychologist, a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, a speech therapist, a nutritionist, a dentist, and a family doctor. Assessments by the different specialists may help determine the child's strengths and weaknesses and help to propose appropriate intervention strategies. It is preferable to introduce routines and medical devices early on during care so that the child will gradually get used to them. For further details about juvenile Huntington's disease, you can contact the Huntington Society.